Afternoon guys and welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another video. Quite a lot of you are looking forward to this. Obviously, we're not. As you know from pre the previous videos, me and Chris completely rebuilt the engine in this, the top end of the engine in this Range Rover. And we actually give the car, well I actually give the car to my little brother who went away fishing in it and told me that he went through a puddle and that it wouldn't run and he couldn't get it out of the puddle. And to be honest, it, I kind of knew that there'd be a little bit more to it. <clears throat> but on Monday, I think I said in a previous video, we would be going and collecting the car. We needed to borrow that seven and a half ton lorry that's in Chris's yard. As you know, on Monday, I did take a day off. It was the first day in a long time. And I did my annual track day with a group of friends. So unfortunately, I did leave Chris on his own to arrange and go and collect the Range Rover. Chris has been over there, collected it. He spoke to the recovery company and they actually said, Chris, it was actually up to its headlights. Well, it was in the lake. It was in the front end of the Range Rover was actually in the lake. We have had a look inside. There doesn't appear to be any water damage in the floors or anything like that. But Chris was showing me earlier the whole front end here, it like it had covered half the lights. It had covered half the lights. Chris actually removed those lights on Monday when he collected this, and he's got them at home, upside down in his spare room. He's washed them out, and he's, we're gonna see if we can save them. Otherwise, we've got to buy a pair of headlights for it. Um, on Monday, yeah, obviously Chris has done that, guys. He's got in there, and he's taken out the injectors and it was hydrolocked. We've got the air filter here. He's had it in a bucket for a few days. And as you can see, it's it's clean. It's fresh water, Chris, isn't it? But it's lake water. So yeah, it sucked water up through the intake here somewhere and it's obviously hydrolocked the engine. So that is what happened to this Range Rover, guys. We are today gonna be working and we don't care if it takes us till 10 o'clock tonight. We are adamant, we're gonna get this stripped out. We've done it before, so we're gonna do it again. And this time, we plan on doing it faster. We're gonna separate the cab from the chassis today. That is our goal. And then the next video will be obviously removing that engine and swapping it all over onto the parts engine. But that is our main goal today. There's gonna to be a lot of time lapse in this video because I wanna cap capture as much of it for you guys as I can. I've, I've watched the other videos back and read the questions and see what bits I missed last time and what bits you guys were really interested in. So in this video, I am going to try and capture that. Let's get on with it, Chris, eh? time-lapse guys we just got cracking straight away the, the uh, time-lapse itself was about 30 seconds but it did actually only take about 30 minutes we've been round we've removed all the wheel arch liners I'm not going to get into a video on that because we did them last time and it's basically a few Phillips screws each side and some trim clips and that is it obviously the brake lines we need to disconnect just the brake pipes from the servo We'll be draining that off. Rear wheel arch liners. Again, few screws. Rear bumper. The wheel arch liner screw that goes through here actually holds the bumper on as well. So I undone them. I whip the back lights out. Two Phillips screws. You've got a few trim clips along the back here. Sorry, it is a little bit dark. And the back bumper pulls off. So that's now ready. We're going to begin opening up the container and start storing like the wheel arch liners, bumpers, all the bigger stuff out of the way. Chris has got cracking in here straight away. He's disconnecting the washer jets, taking it out, getting all the fluids out of the car so that once we start working on it back down on the floor, we can disconnect the pipes and there's not gonna be puddles of water everywhere. There's nothing worse than puddles of water. We have got to lie down underneath there and undo quite a lot of bolts. 
So we try and get all the fluids out first, then we'll have a run round, we'll dry all the floor up so that we're able to lie underneath there. So as you did see in that second time lapse, we really, really have been going for it. I'm just gonna point out a couple of bits for people that never see the previous video. When removing this body shell, it, it is simple. I know it's easy for me to say it's simple. We have done it quite a few times now, but I just wanna really show if you have to do this, like what you need to remove from each corner. So here, you've got these struts. They literally bolt in there. You need to disconnect that. You've got your wiring plug here, large one. You need to disconnect that. That's cab to the chassis. All these earths here, they all stay where they are. Up here, you've got brake... Uh, sorry, I'm going to hold the torch there and just explain. That brake line, you can see, or just literally, you disconnect it, pull the pin out. That's now dripping into that tray we've got down there. You've got the ABS um, or brake warning um, wires. You need to disconnect those. Then you've got an earth at the front there. And then right here at the front, first one you come to is your chassis mount. You've got the bolt up under here. I'm gonna show you those in a moment. Along here, about here on the car, you have another chassis mount. Just under the back door here, again, you have another one. And then just in there, as you can see, it is a little bit dirty. Let me give that a wipe. They are orange and it will pretty much show, but that is it. There guys, that is your other chassis mount. And then you've got one hiding up the back there. Under the back here, the back driver's side wheel arch, all you need to undo is that fuel filler neck. It's one screw and that undoes it. Again, you've got the brake pipe here. You need to pull the clip out, undo it, disconnect that. That's everything on the driver's side rear. Obviously if it's left hand drive, it'll all be around the other way. On the passenger side rear, you've got your brake pipe. There's two huge multi-plugs here, and they actually plug in, let me try and put it down for you. They actually plug in behind there, as you can see. So these stay on the cab, and obviously they stay bolted to the chassis. Um, in the previous video, again, I need to mention it now, you have to wind down that spare wheel. And that's all wound down there. Again, there's two of these strut braces, strut mounts. They have to be disconnected. So on the passenger side rear, that's all you need to undo. On the driver's side at the front, there is a little bit more, but not, you know, not a great deal. And it is all, you can see the whole lot. So we've got brake line, brake hose, ABS sensor. You've then got these earths up here. You have to undo this just, dis just to disconnect one earth cable. The others all stay with the cab. ABS sensor, and then you move on to the front. It's obviously all multi-plug. The whole front panel, everything is multi-plug. So we've now been round. We have to take the wheels off, wheel arch liners out. We're pretty much ready now to go round and stick all the wheels back on. We'll then lower the ramp back down and we'll move the ramp. As you can see at the moment, we've got the ramp on the chassis. So we'll let that down and now move the ramp to the body so that when we lift it, it's not attached. You can see that cable hanging down there. That is the gear change cable. Chris has disconnected that. There's one electrical plug. Under the bonnet, this was on the last video, a lot of people asked me, so I thought I'd make a point of actually showing it this time so that I don't miss it. The steering column. Everything's electric, apart from obviously the steering, all the uh, accelerator pedal, it's all fly by wire. But literally that one star drive that you can see in there guys, we undo that and when the cab comes off the chassis, that separates, very, very, very simple. That is as far as we've got at the moment. Like I said, 
The brakes are all draining down. We're gonna get a bucket under there in a moment, drain all the water down, lift the battery out, remove the tray, scuttle panel wipers. We start unplugging all the main electrical plugs. That's where they're based, in this corner, underneath the scuttle and in the battery. So we're gonna go ahead after we've had a coffee, remove all of that, and then we'll, I suppose we'll be getting ready to do a lift, Chris, won't we? Yeah. So we'll crack on, we'll get that done. I'm gonna put it straight back on time-lapse. Like I said, I don't want you to miss anything. We're making really good time of it today, and we would really love to get it up in the air, get that chassis down, and guys, I promise you, this time, I will not forget, we will jet wash that chassis for you. So there we go guys, we've done it again. To be fair, at first we was dreading it. We've been down this road before, as you know, and we really, really wasn't looking forward to it. But once we got cracking, sorry guys, just taking out the holder there. Once we got cracking, to be fair, it really hasn't taken that long. I will have to have a look at Chris's phone because I can't see why I'm recording to have a look at the time. But we've done it a bit faster than last time. We kind of knew where everything was. It made it really easy, so that did help. The next step, I suppose, is gonna to be to remove the engine. That is gonna be a completely separate video. I'm sorry, guys, I'm just grabbing the torch, just to show we are gonna be giving this all a good jet wash off this time before we put it back in. But as you can see, it is in lovely condition for its age. I think we went down that road before. There's a, a lot of the mud and dirt from the ditch there. It was absolutely chocker underneath with mud and soggy water. So yeah, there you go, guys. That is gonna be the end of today's video. Obviously, it is just the cab lift. The next video is gonna be getting both, getting the engine out, Chris? Yep, that's the plan. Yeah, we'll be getting the engine out. We've got the rack set up, got it tucked just underneath the Range Rover there. We're gonna be putting one of the engines on the rack. The other one, you know, is already on the trolley and we'll be putting them side by side and building them up. But guys, we're well happy. We've got it done in a day. It's really not late. It's still light outside, so it must be before four o'clock. I think we've done really well considering that I actually finished the video on the little Fiat 500 this morning. So we, you'll be watching that video probably tonight and then you'll be watching this video probably tomorrow. So. We've done really, really well, and we're happy with it. Don't forget, guys, Instagram. I'll put little sneak peeks on there. If you haven't followed us on Instagram, go ahead and do that. If you haven't already, uh, if you haven't heard me say, we have got a merchandise shop now. We've got a guy running it who does all the T-shirts, jumpers, etc. I won't go into it, but there will be a link in the description. Guys, if you enjoy our videos, there's no subscription charge. It'd be really nice if you could give it a thumbs up just to show your appreciation. It really does help the channel grow and it really spurs us to bring you more content. We really do appreciate it. Thank you very much for watching. Please like, 
subscribe and share and we'll see you in the next one.